Chimeric is probably the most meaningful song to me that I've ever done. Um, I was walking one night and I, you know the Bible says like pray without ceasing. I, you kind of just, God is always in you, God is always talking to you. So I'm like just walking around at night and I decided to use a different name for him than I, I normally did. And it felt like everything just got silent and quiet. What the heck is going on? It just felt almost as if the whole world just was dead quiet and I just walked in that peace and that quiet. And I sit down to watch TV or something and then it happens again. <laughs> and I'm like, what is happening? And then I hear, uh, not audibly, but I'm, he, I just, I know, I talk to him all the time. I know his voice. He, he said, uh, you're going to write a song, and you're going to call it this, and you're going to shoot a music video for it. And it took me back, and I almost kind of didn't believe it when I first heard it, but I couldn't deny that it was his voice, but I still kind of doubt it. And <laughs> something really weird happened right after that. <laughs> that super, like, kind of confirmed it for me. Then all these signs kept coming to me, and these little messages kept coming. So I was like, you know what? I will make this song. This video has been in the works for so many months. Every single thing that could have possibly gone wrong um, went wrong twice. Like things that are impossible to happen, that do not follow how things function, malfunctioned and like didn't work for me in this. Like I was, I had photos um, of her life, and I wanted to put them on a flash drive so I could print off. Um, actual photos to frame to use as props for the video and my computer would not transfer the photo files onto my flash drive that doesn't happen and then I walked in like 90 degree heat to Walmart <laughs> like a mile down the road with a backpack and then I, I plug the USB into the thing to print the photos and it doesn't work it just freezes and malfunctions on me yeah um, wrote the lyrics Tried to do it as best as I possibly could, but I felt like I was dead inside, man. I had quit rapping. I told God I was so poor. I was so poor, so lonely, so sad. Dude. Like I've made so many songs on so many videos, done so many shows. I've been doing everything that God has told me to do, but I don't see any fruit from it. Like He showed me, it hasn't come to the full fruition yet. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. You, ha I have overly exceeded meeting you where you told me to meet you, you need to meet me halfway now and help me. And nothing that you've shown me has come true. Like, and I was so sad. I was done. I was like, I quit. You know, I'm, I can't do this anymore. You, you know, not even have enough money for food, you know, just because you're trying to do what you want for a living. It was hard. And so I quit. And I didn't think I was going to do another song. And Chromeric was the was still there and I had to write it because he asked me to so that's another reason it's remarkable that I, I finished it I really buckled down to finish it even though I had I had quit and then at that time in my life Akiana had released another painting in another video talking about a guy who was planting a bunch of seeds and there was no sign of any growth or him getting anything from it for years and years and years and years until one day boom it all shot through the ground because it was bamboo and then this like jungle was built in like a matter of months because bamboo takes a while to settle but then it grows really fast. I had gone through very similar experiences in my life um, as Akiana did. Uh, she grew up and was born in Illinois. Uh, my family lives in Illinois and uh, she uh, talked about people selling her. She made the devil's work and saying all sorts of really stupid crap about her. And that happened to me when I started having spiritual experiences too. And it still kind of scars me to this day and makes me not want to talk about stuff out loud. And in the song, I kind of disclose and say some things that I would never talk about, but I thought it was important, you know, to share, you know, to share like, hey, it happened to me too. You know what I mean? Like, it's all good. And so I related with that part of her story. And so I shared some details about things that I had seen and things, uh, supernatural experiences that had occurred in my life and all the ways that people said that I was demon possessed and evil and deceived and how, oh my God, just 
the nastiest stuff you could possibly even think. Langston Hughes has a poem called Genius Child where he describes that no one loves you if you're a genius child and they all say all kinds of evil about you. Nobody loves a genius child. Can you love an eagle tame a wild? Wild or tame, can you love a monster a frightening name? You know, that's how I felt my entire life. And to hear someone who's so obviously pure, you know, be attacked by people, it made me want to just stand up. And instead of attacking them back, I just wanted to offer my flowers to her and be like, yo, it's okay. Like lots of things in my life synced up with her, with her paintings. I felt like I am the brown horse in her, in her uh, painting called Butterfly Passion. There's a horse running through a stream with butterflies and bubbles flying around it. She made it, I think, when she was nine years old or something around there. And uh, she said in the caption, he doesn't know if it's just a dream or if it's reality, but even still, he chases after his love. <sighs> That's my life. And uh, I'm half black and half white. My mom's white and my dad was black, so I was raised with metaphors, you know? They explained our skin color to my big brother using coffee and creamer. Like, this is why you're light, and you don't look like mommy or daddy, because he didn't understand. And so there, my parents always had jokes about, like, a white horse and a black horse, and she has this painting um, <laughs> of a white horse and a brown horse, like, in love, you know, like, nuzzling each other, and she called it First Sight. And I related with that immediately, and I was like, oh my god, that reminds me of my parents and me, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's so cool. I get it, I just connect with her art, and I think she's the greatest painter who's ever lived.